on, guys. Why are you limping? What's going on? Let's go for a walk. I'm gonna suggest you jump over that wire. Whoa, 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 that wasn't a jump. Hope you didn't get shocked. Did you get shocked? Uh-oh, what happened? What, that's not a shock, what did you do? Did you hurt your foot? You got a sticker, hang on. All right, guys. Wolf Daddy, and uh, it's an early Monday morning. Sanctuary is closed today. I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, taking a walk in the woods with my dogs. I've got five dogs, two little ones, Sausage and Speck, uh, two twins, Val and Vaughn, uh, Labradors, and then of course Mr. Pooh, also known as Pooh Face, Pooh Head, and. Uh, I love going for a walk with the dogs, but I gotta say also, I like going by myself because of course the dogs disrupt the world. I mean, anything that's, that's wild is running away. So I don't get to see much wildlife when there's uh, dogs out. But it's always good to take a walk with them. Maybe if I'm lucky today, I might see some kind of wildlife or come across, come across something really cool that I can share with you. And I, uh, and I don't, <laughs> I live in the woods, so everything is kind of cool everywhere I go. Uh, and I find that a lot of my city friends are not interested in things that I think are cool. You know, like bugs and stuff, <laughs> and crawling around on the ground. Finding cool rocks, that sort of thing. Uh, but it's autumn, and autumn is the time where the critters are getting ready for winter. So they're out, uh, the squirrels, the chipmunks, the pack rats, the mice, the ground squirrels all those people are gathering food <clears throat> and uh, making dens came across a badger den the other day I don't want to go back over there because uh, Mr. Sausage thinks he really is a badger dog <laughs> it freaks me out when he goes into the badger den because I don't expect to have good results of that so uh, but I do want to show you one cool thing and uh, I don't know it's right one of them's right here and sometimes um, there's little treasures that appear here this is a uh, harvester ant mound kind of in a weird place on this slight hill here but uh, a couple few cool things about the harvester ant besides the fact that you don't want to get bit by one of these guys because it really freaking crazy hurts but um, as they make this mound what they're doing is they're removing these tiny little pebbles. And uh, these are great. These pebbles are great for uh, uh, rattles. Like the, when, you, when the natives make gourd rattles, these little stones work out really well. And if you get in there, and I don't want to disturb these guys because they're busy. But uh, if you get in there, there's, there, you can even get selective as to what kind of little pebbles if you notice there's lots of little colors and different types yeah, some harder than others some softer than others hey don't hey you're disturbing people got little sister oh that's the boy yeah so the uh, i i they remind me of egyptians for some reason it's like there's, uh, they're so busy doing things uh, this is the opening right now so uh, the dogs have stirred them up a little bit. But I have on occasion found really cool things as, a, as I kind of scoop off some of those little tiny pebbles and brush them away. I, I, those ants were getting too disturbed, so I'll leave them alone. But I've actually out here found beads, uh, shards of uh, chert, um, that actually have some sort of shape. What chert is out here in New Mexico is chert is what they made arrowheads out of. 
a lot of other places, obsidian, and some obsidian too here, but mostly this church, which is also still, I think, a vulcan volcanic type of glass. I find it from time to time. There's also just truckloads of uh, uh, petrified wood out here. Do I hear a rattlesnake, guys? No? Heard something. Come on, guys. Let's walk this way a little faster. Oh, I'm really glad that this road is getting, finally, finally getting grown over. It takes a very long time after vehicles have driven out here for the landscape to recover because it's turning to desert so quickly but you can barely tell that there's a road here but it gets more distinct here in a minute but I'm trying to get it to overgrow so that uh, it doesn't actually get used I have a hundred and sixty two acres here seems like a lot to a, a lot of people especially when you live in the city where you probably only have a uh, you know, really, literally a few thousand square feet of yard. Uh, but uh, uh, I was able to buy it years and years ago for $520 an acre. And I know a lot of people say, well, Leighton, you're always talking about you don't have money. Why don't you sell some land? No, not a chance. Because this, it, it can't get developed. You know, I grew up in a beautiful place in Washington State and uh, as a boy and playing in the woods and just enjoying those woods and all the wildlife that was there and today it's nothing but houses. None of those trees exist anymore. It's just a, a big old community and the wildlife needs a place to live. So the, the joy of this piece of property is the elk have a space to graze because right beside my property actually right there right, right behind me now is uh, BLM property 320 acres which uh, borders my property which is right behind me now and uh, I'm just walking on a road that sort of separates the BLM from my property oh look at this what do you think guys what is it so I'm looking at it. I don't think that's coyote poo. And I see that there's some ants really, really busy, deep dark in there. Uh, it looks like to me like it's um, porcupine or badger poo. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, there's some more poo. For Wolf Daddy to inspect. Oh my goodness. All right, so I'm gonna, holy crow. All right, so that first poo we just saw, I'm gonna say no, no, no. Who's pooping all, whose paws are these? See, I don't see any uh, coyote footprints around here at all. But I see three piles of turds. This one there, this one's older than, than this one. All the same stuff, so we got some, we got, oh, we got lots of like berry-like things in there. Let's take a peek. <laughs> Let's get in there. Oh, this is super fresh. So what are all these berries from? This must be a coyote. Just too hungry and eating just junk. There's fur in there. Right where that ant is, there's fur. Right there is some fur and some sort of bone. But lots of these little berry things. I'm gonna go see if I can find out what, oh, I bet these are juniper berries. And then uh, there's a little bit of uh, pinyon in there, a lot more fur. So yeah, definitely a coyote, but this coyote's eating all kinds of berries and stuff, so it's not catching bunnies. Not hardly at all, it's not scavenging much. It's probably why it's pooping so much and left another pile right here, but I still still don't see much in the way of 
tracks of a coyote, I see these little scratch marks. But um, coyotes are little and light, and the wind's been blowing. That was probably a coyote print right there. And here, there we go. Now I'm seeing them. But the wind's been blowing. Yeah, it's distorted them. This one's got, uh, even some, yeah, pinion or uh, juniper berries because there's even juniper right here. Juniper green right there in it. I don't know if you can see that or not. So, yeah, so this coyote's freaking hungry. Or whoever this is is freaking hungry and they're eating juniper berries. I'll show you. Ugh. Got some beautiful rock formations all along the property. That's, this is actually, um, that rock formation is on BLM property. For those of you who don't know, BLM stands for Bureau of Land Management. I don't know how good of man, land managers they really are, but that's what it means. It's gone, baby. You missed it. It was a, I don't know if I videoed it or not, a big old jackrabbit. They're, they're bigger than these dogs sometimes. So I live in the high desert, and uh, right now where I'm walking is I just checked the altimeter, and it's at uh, 7,398 feet right, right now where I'm walking. Beautiful day today, a little chilly this morning, uh, but uh, all in all, a little bit of breeze which keeps putting hair in my mouth. <laughs> uh, good grief. You know, if it's not my hair, it's dog hair. It's one of the two. It's always that way. I, you know, every, every single time I walk through this forest, I dream of uh, a chipper shredder. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, please, God, send me a giant chipper shredder because there's so much dead wood down on the ground and, we, and weeds and things. If I could mulch them up, and spread them along the soil. The soil could get uh, some good nutrients. And that would reduce also uh, fire hazard. Yeah, my daydream is to trim up the branches on the trees that are touching the ground. Oh, wanted to show you. So this is the juniper berry so that um, we we're seeing in that scat. It's these berries right here. And uh, I'm told also by a medicine man that um, these berries help uh, cure diabetes. I'm not sure how they're used exactly. But uh, yeah, it looks like almost like little grapes everywhere, right? And I know that people make juniper berry jam. Uh, so they have, they've got some, some sort of health benefits and they are edible at some level. And obviously, coyotes or somebody has eaten an awful lot of them. Gotta keep your belly full some way, right? So if you can't get uh, a bunny rabbit or a squirrel, then you gotta eat some berries to keep that belly feeling better. Hey, you two, where are the other dogs? Where those buttheads go? Huh? So here's a little fun fact. All right, this is what I've learned uh, in my days of being here. Uh, and that is, if we want to know how much snow we're going to get, and, and typically in any major fall of snow, it'll be so that these little grass heads will be exposed above the snow. And so uh, it looks to me like about a foot and a half. And um, so we could get as much as one full dump of a, of, an, of a foot and a half of snow at a time. But typically the way I've seen it out here is nature puts these, this is an empty seed head, but nature put these seed heads just above the snow and the birds come and get them. 
but um, so I'm gonna say we're gonna get probably that's much taller so we always look at the find the tallest one that's almost two foot so um, and we want to look around at other weeds and see how tall they are and that gives us an idea how much snow we're gonna get so at least I'm guessing let's see if I'm wrong or right we'll get at least two foot of snow this year uh, and possibly in one dump and then another you know six inches eight inches and in other dumps and that sort of thing so I'm looking through the woods and I see this big old mound of dirt and for a second I'm like well, what's that mound of dirt I'll show you so years ago like I don't know 18 years ago almost uh, out in the woods here, I, I built some habitats because I needed to help out a friend who had some wolves that needed an emergency home. And then after they were taken care of, some other people needed an emergency space for some wolves after losing their home to a fire. So that mound of dirt it's just the dirt from the hole where I put the poop when cleaning up, but here's the habitats. Uh, no one's been in them since uh, Angel and Nazareth several years ago, so I haven't even been out here. The soil looks like it's recovering fairly well. A lot of, a lot of weeds, a lot of dryness. Yeah, gosh, I wish I could water this place, but... This is probably a little more than a quarter mile from my house, maybe even a half mile. Uh, yeah, hey, funny, <laughs> it's not a funny story. I haven't told this, uh, but uh, I'm walking towards an area here on my property where we have ceremonial grounds. So years ago, uh, we did Sundance, and I think the very first Sundance there were two wolves in those habitats and I made a big fat boo-boo thinking that there's no way the, the latch gate latch was so hard to get open and closed that I didn't fully close it once because it was just so hard I'm like if I can't get it open this wolf isn't gonna get it open <laughs> yeah right yeah, so she did and then she dug out um, from the sub enclosure and she was running free around here while the Sundance was going and people were like, I, I swear we saw a wolf. I'm like, nah, nah, it couldn't happen. <laughs> and uh, they're like, yeah, I'm pretty sure we saw a wolf. I'm like, no, nah, I'm pretty sure you didn't. And I didn't actually fess up because I didn't want to stir people up. And as soon as the ceremony was over and people had left, left, um, we were able to get her in one day, get her right back into her habitat. But I didn't want to cause any commotion, so I just made sure that she was fed every day uh, right by her habitat. She didn't go far. She didn't go probably more than three, 400 yards away from the habitat because her partner was still in there. And he was, he's like, I ain't digging out, uh -uh, not me. So, kind of funny. Uh, the adventures I have with wolves is absolutely crazy. I literally can tell you thousands of stories. And uh, if you by chance, have uh, some super creativity and uh, and can do you know you know how to use a computer <laughs> better than me I would like to create I don't know what else to call it so I'm just gonna call it a PowerPoint presentation but it's not that but as far as um, like showing slides and videos related to the stories that I can tell I'd like to put together about an hour and a half to two hour presentation of me just telling the incredible stories of my adventures with the wolves and uh, and then be able to like on two big screens show video and photographs uh, of what I'm talking about. So when I talk about Storm or Gaia or, or any of these animals or King or anybody that uh, the audience has a reference as to what this animal looks like. I literally have video of exactly what I'm speaking about, but in fragments. Uh, so, and some of it's really old video. 
so it's not the best of the story. It's easier to tell a story and just show a little bit of video so people can get a, like a visual reference. I like to paint a really good picture when I'm telling my stories, but I just feel like the audio uh, of my voice and the video and audio of video uh, and the photographs would just really like give it that next step up. Uh, because almost every presentation I've given in the last 20 years has been with a wolf with me, which is very dynamic and it really captivates the audience. And uh, and people, it's so fun to for me to tell my stories. And literally when the storytelling is over and I'm off the stage and I'm heading to the parking lot, people are still following, asking questions, and I'm telling more stories even in parking lots. So. I love storytelling and uh, I've been told numerous times that I'm, I'm very, very good at it and I'd like to pursue that more, so, but I, I really feel like I needed that second brain, that second creative person that, or third you know, creative person that can say, okay, tell me some stories. I say the stories and go, okay, how can we present this and just make it really, really captivating and cool on stage. I know the, the stories themselves are, but I've seen some really great like one person stage presentations and talks uh caesar milan was one dr brady barr was another one that i saw that i really enjoyed then i've seen others on youtube uh i've only seen those other two uh in person uh, but i've seen some on youtube and i'm like i can do that and i believe that it would be fun exciting uh emotional and captivating i hope it would be uh just me telling the stories, uh, the adventures I've had with Raven, so many, and the adventures I had with Storm, oh so many, and then and every single rescue, you know, at some level is a story. And then their stories grow at each year and each day that they're there at the sanctuary. So there's so much to tell, and of course I can't tell it all, but, uh, but I really would love to do that. And, uh, so, uh, so if you are someone who's got that that creative brain, and we can sit one on one, I'm a really, uh, I know, I know there's so much, so many people do stuff online and they chat online. It's hard for me. I like to be in the same room. It's not always possible, I know. But if you got some creative ideas of how I could put that all together, so my brain sort of sees how to put it together, but I don't know how to use uh, any kind of program like PowerPoint so that uh you know that for timing of you know the pictures coming up or the videos playing and me talking i don't know how to put those pieces together so maybe you do or you know someone who does tell them about me show them my my youtube channel and say hey this guy wants to do something really cool on stage and uh, i actually got invited years ago before uh he got a, uh, went into a nasty divorce uh, Caesar asked me if I would like to do a, his Canadian tour with him, but things happened, didn't manifest, that's okay. Um, it was exciting that I even got asked, um, because when I met him a few times, we, I just shared stories. I, I love just stopping people and saying, hey, you want to hear a cool story? <laughs> and uh, so, um, anyway, uh, and now I'm trying to do storytelling basically on YouTube and Facebook with these videos. And uh, feel free to ask. I'm really now. I'm really enjoying. I've got some really fabulous feedback the last few days uh, of my video from my videos and private messages. People asking questions. Uh, love it. Please continue to do that because then it lets me know that you're there. And uh, uh, even though I, you know, sometimes I see oh uh, x amount of views. Well, that could be for two seconds. And so when I hear people ask me certain questions that I know. They got those questions, questions came from the end of the video, so they actually watched the whole thing. Hey, where? Uh, oh, there you go. Hey, hurry up, sausage. Come on, buddy. Let's head home. Daddy's getting thirsty. So I'm probably a half mile at least from my house. I've kind of made a big circle. Uh, so, anyway, I'll find something else fun to look at here in a second, and, uh, and I'll let you go. So the majority of my life, uh, actually starting, I think I was probably like 11, 12, where I walked through a wheat field. Didn't know I had celiac disease back then. 
I didn't know that until I was 45, 46. But I walked through a wheat field and my eyes closed up, my head stuffed up. And it was from that point on where I had uh, allergies all year long. And then after going gluten free, I stopped getting allergies except for this time of year because of these culprits here, these yellow flowers. So I've determined that it's the yellow flower world, <laughs> the world of yellow flowers. Uh, and oftentimes when we have a really good summer of rain, we get beautiful sunflowers everywhere and I'm just so allergic, but here I am walking through it right now and I'm fine. A little bit of a runny nose, a little sniffles, but I'm so grateful that since going gluten free, I have only one time of the year where I have an allergy and that's this time of year. So uh, the autumn, so that's pretty cool. And uh, the other thing I was just thinking about when I was taking this walk today is because uh, I hear these commercials all the time about getting a flu shot. And I've never got a flu shot, but I've also never got the flu. I haven't, I don't think I've had the flu in oh, at least, at the very least, 15 years. Um, maybe 10. I just don't have a memory now of actually having the flu. Uh, so uh, I'm, uh, it always makes me think that, you know, I hear these flu shot commercials and I'm like, is that still a thing? Do we still, does that exist? <laughs> I don't want it. I'm just grateful I have never got it. And then also the common cold. Is that still a thing? I don't watch television. Only I you know, uh, Netflix, YouTube and that sort of things. I don't know that I've seen uh, some, any kind of a cold commercial. Uh, I haven't had a common cold in, I don't know, I don't remember, 10, 15 years. Um, so uh, I, I think it's still a thing, but I haven't got that. And I think a lot of that is, if not all of it, is due to the radical shift in the way I eat. And, uh, and also just being outdoors, not being around a lot of other humans and uh, you know, not be going to shopping malls or crowded stores or anything like that, hardly ever. Uh, Walmart is probably the crowded store and I try to always pick a day where there isn't gonna, or time and day that there's not gonna be a crowd. So uh, I'm really big on believing that, there you are, that uh, diet has a lot to do with getting those things like the cold. Well, there's something. There's a beautiful person right there. Look at you. Look at you. So September, October is tarantula season. I wonder if this person's heading back to their house. But if this is a girl, which I think it is, uh, they don't wander too far from their front door. Well, as I was zooming in my camera, she zipped into her little house. Uh, so I guess I won't show you because I didn't see where it disappeared to in that few seconds, but I can see that it's probably right down there. robe and uh, now I'm super dry I don't like carrying stuff so I'm carrying a camera already <laughs> I just need to get some like water holster thing I can hook on my belt and, uh, beautiful day I'm grateful for the day I'm grateful for all my friends on YouTube all my Facebook friends and thank you for the comments. Keep them coming. I hope your week is the best and uh, that you find something cool that you can share with friends. And uh, if you're feeling like you, you got into a funk, kind of like I did this past weekend, and I got some tips for you. 
get out of that funk. First tip, take a cold shower. <laughs> it tends to work and it's hard to do, but try it out. I've been doing it every day now for a month or two. Yeah, yeah, well, two or three actually. Um, another one, kiss on your doggy. If you don't have a dog, go find a neighbor who's got a dog. You can get some Buddha belly rubs out of and kiss on those, those cheeks. Just grab the cheeks, pull them close to your face, kiss all over them, okay? That's number two. Number three, take a walk in the woods, okay? Take a walk in the woods, enjoy the fresh air, enjoy the sounds of nature, the earth, the dirt, everything, all those things. Uh, well, I am walking, coming up on the Old Daddy's Sweat Lodge. Uh, people have been talking about getting in there and doing a sweat. Uh, it's always there. Thanks for showing up, guys. <laughs> Come on, let's. All of our tongues are hanging out. Let's go get some water. All right, guys, let's go get in your pool. Come on. Hey, so as always, friends, be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like my videos. Leave a comment. Be sure to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Hit the bell icon. I'm doing my best to put out as many videos as I can. Hoping to build a really engaged audience. So I want to engage with you. So leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up. If you don't like my videos, give me a thumbs down. And uh, hey, don't you don't need to watch anymore. <laughs> but regardless, my, my friends, I really love and uh, love what I'm doing here, and hopefully you're loving what I'm doing. Let me know. Tell me what you want to see. Hey, I live in the woods. I live around wolves and coyotes and dingoes and New Guinea singing dogs and elk and deer and crazy human beings and uh, beautiful rock formations. So let me know what you want to see, what you want to hear, and uh, I'm going to get back out in the woods after I get a drink of water and get some uh, sunshine on my body. Get that vitamin D inside. So, hey, thank you so much.